afternoon, everyone. Uh, that was a very thrilling uh, and exciting actually panel and uh, really getting into some of the real issues that we face today and I like the topic about trust. And now speaking on that, or as you know, the next panel is really talking about something a bit more um, across the different industries. How can big companies work with small companies to, for community development, to benefit community? And I think we have a really interesting panel with us today. And some of the things that we're gonna talk about are those relationships. And somebody said this earlier, what's the purpose of government? Where do they come in? So I thought, let me just uh, kind of take it from there. Communities only don't develop only because of government safety nets, but because they give us the room and opportunity to be enterprising, to be able to be innovative, to seek our own destiny by being our own leaders, our own managers, being our own bosses. And those things come back to the community. It is an economic cycle. Money is created, uh, an employee or a, a small business gets that money or revenue, puts it towards their needs, which goes back into society, and again, that drives government, which feeds, again, the same infrastructure that gives us the opportunities to be enterprising. So you can see that cycle. It's not one or the other, and there's, it's a handshake. Now the question is of where does that responsibility lie and how should we all work together? And we have an amazing set of panelists today to provide you a very wide view on how that can happen. We coincidentally all happen to be from the Chamber of Commerce. And my name is Harbir Bhatia. And with me today, I have very, um, a very diverse group of panelists that are, again, represent and understand the, the impact and that relationship between small businesses, corporations, even government, and that cycle and impact to communities. So the first one next to me is Payal Prasad. She is the head of procurement at Silicon Sage. The CEO could not be here because he had a meeting with a fire chief and he couldn't leave. So thankfully we have the next best person in the room. Uh, we have Ravinder Lal. He is a CEO of a series of UPS stores down in the South Bay, also very involved in the community. We have Nick Kaspar, the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. And we have, to the furthest left, uh, we have uh, Chris, who is actually one of the largest, and probably the largest, if I may say that properly, uh, employer in Santa Clara. He is the SVP of Kaiser Permanente, or the CEO, if you want to say, of Santa Clara's Kaiser Permanente. So as you can see, between all of these different folks, we have a great variety of sizes of companies, type of companies, and the benefits that they've seen uh, provided to the community. So what I'm gonna first do is have uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce provide us a perspective to level set what does it mean to be working in an environment with small businesses and corporations to give us an idea of what's really happening in society, what's that benchmark, what's that relationship? And then we can go from there asking our individual panelists questions re relating to their industry as well as the size of that company. So let's start with you, Nick. Thank you. I yeah, I got okay. one. Um, Leading up to this panel, I did a lot of research on um, small business uh, for the nation. Um, obviously, Silicon Valley is a, a little bit of a different animal um, here, but going through as a nation, small businesses, um, most are in business services, um, restaurants, um, what's it, spa, health services, and that's much different than you would see in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley's more tech-based, a lot more startup-based. And um, so speaking in this, area, um, everyone has a small business, everyone has what they call, uh, the millennials call a side hustle, where <laughs> they work for a different, uh, work for a, a large company here and then have their own small business on the side. Um, and so all, so everyone's goal is to really f have their job fund their small business and then once their small business becomes big enough, they quit their job and now they work in their small business enough until they could sell it. Um, that's really the goal for a lot of people in Silicon Valley. And so I think with that mindset, everyone looks to fast track that by working with big businesses. If they could land a couple of clients, then they could quit their job and now focus solely on their small business. Um, so with that, I think, I think um, going into it, people think of landing big clients and working with big businesses as a fast track to 
getting to their goal and they don't understand a lot of what comes behind that. So. And it's interesting you mentioned this point about you know, being in the Silicon Valley. I guess we kind of forget small businesses are not just tech. Actually, the larger portion of small businesses are all the other human services. And that's an interesting point he brought up because I think we all think and we become so focused that everything is about tech. Well, that is true, but there's so much more to be entrepreneurial about and be innovative about. So that was a great point. So let's go to actually two of our large corporations and, and see from their perspective. So as I was saying, you know, Kaiser is the largest employer in Santa Clara and has a strong sense of community, community engagement, and social responsibility. And you being the head of that ship, how have you seen Kaiser get involved and how do you ensure that the whole organization gets behind that mission? Thanks, Avir. And I also want to say thank you for recognizing us as a, I don't know how you referred to us as being a distinguished, but I tell you, that last panel, that was pretty impressive. Yes. Those guys were very impressive. But I hope, I think we're impressive too. <laughs> Can you give Especially a round of applause for that, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a little more energy so than that. So Kaiser guys. Permanente, uh, you know, as you, you mentioned, we do have a, a huge social conscience. And we've, um, you, you think as a big business, uh, you know, in a national company that it's impossible for the small uh, local companies to be involved. You know, that would probably be the first uh, thought of, of many small businesses, but that really isn't so. Uh, as part of that social consciousness, it's, it's about giving back to the community, and it happens in a couple of ways. The one that's most obvious is uh, through our uh, community benefit program, and, and what we do is uh, we identify uh, priorities in the community, community needs, and we, we um, do this through focus groups with the, the community, and, and we update it every, every three years. And so what that means is then we, we develop corridors of funding, things that are maybe it's... Um, Oh, uh, violence, uh, maybe it's food, maybe, you know, healthy food, whatever. And, and then we publish those priorities and local nonprofits, which in themselves are small businesses, mm -hmm. have the ability, if, they, if they're in that space, they can apply for grants. And we will then uh, uh, review their applications. And uh, last year, just in the Silicon Valley alone, and this would include both my facility at uh, Santa Clara and the San Jose facility, uh, you know, we funded over uh, $3 million just in uh, this last year. So we do an awful lot with those small businesses. Then there's uh, another way that, that we do it, and that is uh, more uh, in line with what we're, we're talking about here, is, um, well, I, again, with the social consciousness of uh, Kaiser Permanente, it was about a decade ago where they uh, decided to become a part of the, I think it was called the Billion Dollar Club, where we made a commitment to invest in minority and women-owned businesses. And so we quickly got to that point, but that was across the whole enterprise. Every facility looked to um, work with uh, minority and, and women businesses. Well, in, a, in a, another vein on that, um, we have, um, we know that, that the health of the community, and, and Kaiser Permanente is all about health and wellness. But it's more than just what the, the quality care that we deliver within the four walls of our facility. It's really what can we do to positively impact the health of, uh, of the communities that we serve. And we've um, recently looked at uh, what we call uh, the determinants of health care. We want to get a, ahead of illness, ahead of some of these uh, things that cause people to have ill health. Or, or accidents, and the social determinants are in, in a, a number, of, there's a number of them. One um, that comes to mind is access to care. Are we accessible to our community? So if they need us, are we easily uh, accessible? Another one is uh, access to uh, healthy food options. A, a great example of that is a couple of weeks ago, I was with uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Mary Papazian, uh, the president of San Jose State, and we did the ribbon cutting for the Spartan, um, food uh, pantry. And that is because there was recognized that not only the well-publicized uh, situation where students can't afford housing, so they sleep in cars or other, but they also can't afford to eat. And so not only do these kids not have a place to sleep, but they go to sleep hungry. So we were the first to stand up and say we can make a difference. And working with San Jose State, we funded the uh, opening of this food pantry. So now kids have access to healthy food options. 
So that's, that's an example of how we're trying to get ahead of uh, the determinants. Others are homelessness. And, you know, you go down the list and certainly the economic health of the community is, is also a, a part of it. And so we have a program called um, uh, Supplier Diversity. And there's criteria to be a part of that, but the idea is, is that, um, you know, we're, we're looking to contribute to the economic health of the communities we serve and reflect the diversity of the communities we serve. So we will leverage our buying power to make a sustainable impact on, um, on the health of, of our communities. And so we, you know, the, the, the way this thing would, would um, move is, is that, you know, we would create economic uh, community wealth by uh, generating good jobs and employment opportunities and then support uh, the development of businesses that spur economic development in those communities. So it's really a very innovative program, but it's all designed uh, to affect the, the total health of the community and the economics being a part of it. So in your case, they've actually made it a part of their value and their goal. Oh, absolutely. To ensure yeah. that it's actually proliferated throughout the company versus one division, you know, being very um, cognizant of the social, as you said, social conscious. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. Versus another group who may not. So you've actually embedded it into the programming yeah, of this the company. Is, this is one of those core uh, values that, that we have of uh, getting in front of. And it's, it's, it, I, I think we may be the only healthcare company that has uh, taken it to this step. There are others, I mean, a lot of people will talk about population health now, but, but we're actually taking a stand and, and looking at a mechanism to get into the communities and, and support uh, not only economic um, health, but also diversity. And I recall, and I'm not sure if this is still the case, wasn't it Kaiser that was actually working on housing, uh, developing homeless? Yeah, uh, we've homeless? Uh, committed $200 million to uh, company-wide, but, you know, we've had discussions with uh, Mayor Licardo and, and others on how can we help support um, home, and that's another determinant of, of health care. Yeah. You know, and special... Um, support for the veterans uh, in that population. And, um, but anyways, there's a lot that needs to be done and, and we're actually putting our money where, where our mouth is. Thank you. And I think that's probably a similar, in the similar line, I, I guess, Bile, for you, maybe you can share your thoughts because you are head of the department um, at Silicon Sage, which is dealing with numerous vendors. And uh, I, I know it firsthand because I actually work with uh, bio and uh, community benefit is an important factor. So maybe you can share your perspective on how Silicon Sage is doing something similar from the um, economic standpoint and the foundation standpoint. So uh, Silicon Sage is a construction company and we do a lot of multifamily projects in the Bay Area and we do a lot of infill projects. Construction as an industry itself, uh, it attracts a lot of small businesses. And an interesting fact, uh, which I just found out, was 10 of the fastest growing industries among small, in uh, small uh, industries is construction related. Like um, real estate agents, they're a big part of uh, con the construction industry. We have designers, architects, civil engineers. Um, they, they all uh, form small uh, industries. We use them, utilize them, even before construction starts. So uh, before, um, that's before construction. During construction, of course, we touch upon so many different trades, right from um, excavation, grading, to finishes inside the units, roofing, painting, landscaping. And we see a lot of uh, folks who are small, small groups, small industries. And uh, we try to engage as many of them as possible. Once the construction starts, there's so many people who just walk by the side and inquire if there are job opportunities. We do engage them, uh, of course, uh, you know, after wetting them out. And um, with uh, utilizing these uh, small industries, we are benefiting the community directly because they uh, ultimately, you know, they engage in their communities. The monies go directly back into the communities. Uh, lo lots of benefits that we see. Uh, so that's during construction and even after construction. Um, of course, during construction, we, uh, as, um, as a builder, we, our focus is on sustainable design. LEED is kind of a sustainable uh, benchmark, and a lot of our projects are LEED compliant, which uh, not, kind of 
Can you tell people what, what is LEAD? LEAD is Leadership in, in Energy and Environmental Design. And uh, that is um, just a benchmark of how green your building is. And it does um, focus on using materials which are uh, locally sourced. Hmm. So that in, in turn pushes us uh, to engage the local communities and local products. Um, and once the uh, once you know the product is of course a building, and uh, because of the lead initiatives, uh, we encourage uh, walkable communities and uh, pedestrian-oriented communities. So the community, uh, the local shops which are already there, which are small businesses, now they benefit from uh, having a new product, a new uh, multifamily or a mixed-use uh, development that we end up with. So I think uh, as an industry, we touch upon a lot, um, lot of these small businesses. And I think you had mentioned this to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the six out of every two, 10 business, new businesses are construction related? 10 fastest growing industries. Wow, yeah. okay, well. Mm -hmm. uh, that just tells you, if anybody wants to get into that business, there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> so lots, it's, like, lots of it's not just tech, guys. <laughs> <laughs> tech is just one piece of it. Um, you know, and I think you just, again, brought it back to that affects the local community. And, I, and I'm glad to say that, you know, uh, each of the organizations on, the, on this panel so far are extremely focused on giving back. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is, again, being empowered by that engine. And one of the greatest examples of this is, is Ravinder. Uh, he's not only um, you know, very much engaged as, as a business owner, but I think you know, if we were to hear his story, we might see how, as an example of the impact he's had, and then how he's been able to support communities because he's actually on boards, uh, on many boards of nonprofits, again, not only because he cares about it, but he's been enabled to do that as well. So maybe you can share with us some of those stories and how you've seen that directly benefit. Sure, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, I've been in business 13 years and I came to this community of Santa Clara uh, not knowing anybody, uh, born and raised in San Francisco. So uh, when I came here, it was like, okay, the people I knew were the people who came into my business. Um, so at that time, I owned one UPS store uh, here in Santa Clara on Homestead and Kylie. Got to give myself a little plug. Um, <clears throat> and I started meeting people. And I had a life-changing moment. Uh, a local school came in and they said, hey, you know, we're sending 500 pairs of shoes to Africa. Uh, can you help me, help us out and ship them to New York? And we're gonna have a boat from there, ship it. So I said, okay. Uh, I said, you know what, I'll do you one better. I'll just ship it for free. Don't worry about it. It's for kids and it's shoes, right? So little did I know how much of a profound impact that was gonna have on my life. So they called me, the school called me, hey, we're ready for you to pick up our shoes. Is it okay if the kids take pictures with you when they're giving you the uh, shoes? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So I show up, I've got a parade of kids out in front of the school, waiting for me to get there in my little truck, and they start singing me songs, and they wanna take pictures with me. And it was the most rewarding experience that I had had up to that moment. And it was wonderful, and at that moment, I was hooked. I was hooked on that feeling of giving back to the community and feeling something in return. Now, that moment was such a key moment because not only did it introduce me into the world of philanthropy, but I got a new client out of it as well at the same time. Now, that client led to one thing and I wanted that feeling again, so I got, I got involved with another nonprofit and that nonprofit, the interesting thing when you're working with nonprofits and, and charities is the people that you meet. So, for example, I met Mr. Boyd here, uh, working, I can't even, I don't even know which one at this point because we're on a few together. Um, but I've gotten some tremendous business by meeting gentlemen like this. Now, we talk about bridging the gap between small business and big business. When you can meet somebody 
and they trust in you and they believe in you and they see what you've done in the past, uh, it speaks volumes. Now, has anybody ever heard of a, a company called Apple? So Apple is a, is a perfect example of working with the big business. So a few years ago, while they're still building the spaceship down the, up the street here, uh, I'm at a police activities league event. And I had a gentleman standing next to me. He knew me from doing some work with another organization. And he said, you know, I just got this new uh, project. You know, it's the Apple campus that they're building up the street here. And uh, he said, you think you can print like a thousand signs for me? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. Little did I know, at the time I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do a thousand signs? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fortunately for me, it was thousands of signs over a few years. Now that ended up being one of the biggest clients and the biggest job I had. And really that happened because of being involved in the community mm -hmm. and talking to the people in the community. Now when we say how can small business and big business work together, I think that's a perfect example. Now they help me out and in turn I help out other nonprofits and we try and make this a better community, a better place to live. Thanks for Vendor. So did you do the Apple ones for free too? <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> you know, I, I just want to point out that while you're getting these uh, things, obviously you've got to make the connection and, and fit whatever criteria that they're, they're looking for. In our case, it's a, you know, supplier diversity. But, you know, in your case, you know, there's trust because you, you deliver. You say what you, you know, what you, you're gonna do and then you, you deliver. You're competitive in your, your pricing and you have extraordinary customer service. So one part of it is getting in there, but it, to stay in there, that's, that's harder because you've gotta have that consistency and, and all of those uh, efforts. So I wanted to add, like, um, part of Silicon Sage, we recently added this community benefit uh, division, and uh, Herbeer is a part of it, and as part of that, um, you know, initiative, we reach out to the communities in many different ways. Something that I'm really excited, looking forward to is Habitat for Humanity. And we women folks, as one day where it's men can rule the office, <laughs> And we're going to be building, and that's another way of connecting to the community, a very small uh, effort on our end, but it'll mean so much for somebody in need. That's just one initiative, and there are so many different ways we reach out to the communities when we're building the projects, even during the planning. We reach out, uh, Herbie actively engages with community folks, trying to understand uh, what works, what projects uh, you know, um, would work best in the neighborhood. So. Um, our industry really touches upon a lot. Uh, it's, it's great. You know, there's something you guys are all talking about, and I thought, well, why don't we just call this out? What's the difference between a large corporation and a small corporation or a small business? Well, small business, you can talk to the person at the top right away. You build that relationship, right? And in many cases, it's very hard to get to that point, and actually most cases, in a large corporation. So there is a sense of direct relationship, accountability, outcome that happens when you're able to touch the owner or get to know the owner of a small business because you know they're the decision maker. There's nobody else in between. And that same small business owner then also is actually quicker to make a decision to support the community. It is not that you have a longer bureaucratic process. You're empowered because you've economically um, uh, seen the engine working and you feel that I can actually dedicate this much percentage of my revenue towards supporting these projects. I don't need to ask board. You are it, right? And I think that's an interesting thing we, we kind of forget, that small businesses are in a position of control over their own destiny and are quicker to make those choices because they live and breathe in those communities. They know the needs of that community. And in larger corporations, they have a different purpose and a different engine. So I think what I'm gonna give you, actually, perfect, and make an example, ask Nick to give an example of some of the things that he's been able to see between the large corporations and the small corp or businesses because he knows the membership 
all through the chamber, which is some large and some small, and some of the kind of challenges they face and some of the benefits they get because of being part of the chamber. Yeah, thank you, Beer. Um, I think the, the big thing that, that everyone's touched upon, and there, you have the big uh, corporations and the small businesses here, is that is getting access. Um, you could go to, you could know a 500 people that all work at Google, and not one of them um, has the authority to help your business. Um, and so getting access, and what I've done, or what I've seen through the chamber, is the best way to give access, or to get access to these companies are through the community. Um, when you when you're a big company, you want to be involved, and you have that social or that um, responsibility back to the community. Um, that's a lot easier to go and say, how can I help out the community alongside these big corporations than trying to email a big corporation and said, can you give me 15 minutes for me to uh, give you a sales pitch? And so I think using the community and really giving back, um, and and it's finding what is what is important to you and really focusing on that and seeing what businesses come with that, and then I, th I think that gives you a lot more access. No. So, so um, in terms of, of the examples you're seeing on, on the stage, can you think about how some of the folks in the room could get benefit from you know, using the economic or the relationship engine of Chamber? I mean, we have events, we have those kind of things, and this is not intended to be a plug, it's just to really give you live examples of how this works. Maybe you can speak to some of those. Yeah, I think um, people don't know this, but some of the biggest um, deals that I know about that ever happened through the Chamber were through the Community Relations Committee because these um, large corporations that want to come in and help the community come to the chamber and that's the first, that's the first uh, committee they wanna be on and they wanna see. And so it's much more than just, and for, for the small businesses I say, it's much more than just going and saying, here's my business card, let's sit down and talk, but show, the, show, these, um, uh, show these other businesses how you can work by giving back to the community and then you build that trust and then now when, um, say this large corporation says, you know what, we're in a bind right now, our usual s supplier is not able to do it, I'm gonna give this guy a try. And then that's right when, that's when you take that and you as a small business and you have the ability to say, like Revender, yes I can do that, I'm gonna figure it out after, but yes I can do that. Um, if, you're, if you're not as flexible, um, say another large company, they say, well, I'm sorry, that's not our policy. Well, small businesses can change their policies. And so I think that's where, is you just need to get an edge, and then once you get that edge and that you get a shot, that's when you need to be flexible and really produce. So maybe as, as a kind of a last question to you all, maybe you can talk about some of the opportunities you see and share some tips for others that are watching in the room and, and online. You know, how can they take this step forward, and then really come back to bringing the point of this is, how does that benefit and how does that increase community development? So there's a, a couple of ways for, for Kaiser Permanente. One is that supplier diversity, and there's a the website, there's an application, and, and uh, so if you want to get into that pipeline, there's a very um, specific way to do it. I'd say the other is just what I think we're all saying is making the connections. Uh, you know, Ravinder gave an example. I have another one of a, a, another community member who's involved in a lot of things, and, and we are having trouble. And these are, you know, for, for our organization, these are little things, but for a, a sole proprietor of a business, it, it was a big deal. And it was uh, one of the events that uh, we were mobilizing for uh, one of these walks that uh, we get involved in a lot of them and we wanted t-shirts and I looked at the pricing that we had done and, and it had started years ago with a, with a local company but it was not a competitive price but we had just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. So I, I uh, this individual who I knew from the community, I said, would you be interested? And, and he said, well, absolutely. And he gave us a price that was very competitive and you know, I, it was after the event, he came back to me and said that was the biggest um, uh, um, order. order that I've ever had. Wow. And, and he delivered, and now he uh, continues to, to deliver t-shirts for, for us. Um, but it, it, it just have to be a part of the, uh, that wouldn't have happened if, if um, we had not connected in some of the community events. But as you just said, that was his biggest order. <laughs> and it's again interesting, right? For him, it's a life-changing um, model for him to be a small business owner, to receive one order, it's his greatest revenue stream, he, he's going to decide what to do, either in, you know, improve his business, is he going to uh, potentially hire more employees, I mean, it's a direct impact. Right. Great. 
I think I think the biggest opportunity is getting involved, whether it's the chamber, which obviously I'd welcome, or other community um, groups out here. Because I think it's once, like Chris said, once you uh, these small or these large companies have um, a lot of different, or they they order, they just by mass, they need more product or whatever it is, and so if you have you can land one order that can be life changing, and so I think if you just the opportunity is getting involved in the community because that's when you get access. And then once you have access, then it's then you're able to show what your business is. And obviously, if it's a good business, then it'll continue and you'll land big, um, big jobs in it. And but at that point, getting the hardest part is getting access to these companies. So could you speak to that for a bit um, for everybody's benefit? Chamber has large, mid-sized, and small businesses, right? So maybe you can speak to them about some of the activities and initiatives that are going on that small businesses in the room could join, or even startups. I don't mean small businesses as just non-tech, but all different uh, types of businesses that can connect with other large um, organizations, like the kind of initiatives and the programs, events that we have. Sure, yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the ones that we do, um, and it's every other month, is women in business. And that's really to support um, the women. And it's a, a lot of times they're, they're, um, so they're owners of their businesses. And I was reading some stats before that, that said, uh, it was, I think it was 40% or something is, is uh, w women is in business now. And of those women that are starting new businesses, 63% are women of color. And so I th we're really trying to support that. And with companies like Kaiser, where they see that diversity is important, we have companies that want to get involved. And so that type of um, event that we hold is one that really meshes with the big, um, big, medium, and small businesses. Another one um, that we do, it's our annual event. It's the pyramidal, or the, I'm sorry, it's, the, it's uh, coming up on June 14th. It's the, our annual awards dinner. Well, this is an award of, of our entire membership, and this is the one time of the year where you can meet every the largest companies down to the smallest companies. And so really getting involved in those different, um, the events where you see, and a lot of times it's giving back. And so getting involved in those where you see the larger companies are going to be there and the smaller companies, I think that's the most where you'll... Um, Great. have more access, yeah. Uh, and just before uh, Ravinder speaks here, just to give a little bit of information about the new vision, it's a new vision of the chamber, is to create thriving communities. It is not just to help business, but we realize business is a tool, an engine for the community to thrive. So we're uh, very proud to say that. Uh, Ravinder. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, First, I want to I want to congratulate my dear friend Diana Ding here on 10 year anniversary. That's amazing. And the reason I, I want to bring up Diana is because she has been just an amazing person in this community. You know, she started 10 years ago, and the way she built her business. How does she know every CEO in Silicon Valley? How does everybody? that come around know Diana and want to work with her and be around her. It's because she gives back. It's because she builds those relationships and makes people feel special. So I know there's a lot of people out there saying, how can I be successful and get some of that business? Well, you know what, use Diana as an example. Be giving, give back, be selfless, and make other people feel special and they will want to do business with you. Great, great thought. I'm going to be quick. <laughs> so uh, Silicon Sage, uh, our CEO, Sanjeev, he believes giving back to the community in various forms. Um, we are the organizers of Savathon, which is an annual event that brings together. Um, it's, it's held in San Jose. It's one of the biggest um, walkathons, if I can uh, say. And um, uh, like I mentioned, uh, in being in the construction industry, we do engage a lot of small businesses because they tend to be more competitive. Again, the fact that they don't have as much overheads as big organizations, and um, they deliver. So uh, we welcome uh, small businesses. I'm going to talk to you after. <laughs> Good. That's why I put you next to each other. Okay. Uh, so, you know, in, in closing, I think uh, this is a great topic this year. And again, as, as Ravinder said, a shout out to Diana. I think this is a wonderful uh, consideration for us, you know, stopping, um, not just stopping at, hey, how do you make money? 
but how do you create value? And how do you create value by understanding that the relationship between corporations and small businesses and how that impacts society? And I would like to say to finally talk to these folks. They're great examples. Get involved. You build relationships, then you build trust, and then on that, this is what you get. Thank you very much.